Okay. All right, I think we should be good to go. Um, hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. And um, you know, very excited to have you all here at the Firstly Real Talk. And before diving in, I just wanted to give you an idea of what, what Firstly Real Talk really is. I know that when we're um, having conversations with professionals and just developing ourselves and um, getting ahead in career development, um, it's really easy to forget that the professional that you're speaking with is just another person who has been through their own set of challenges, who has um, you know, gone through some of these same experiences that you might have. So really the purpose of Firstly Real Talk is to kind of show you that connection and the person behind the title of a professional. And so um, I'm very excited to welcome Craig here today. Um, Craig is a tax partner and leader at, within RSM. And just, you know, we're gonna have Craig introduce himself a little bit, but in terms of a, of a brief bio, Craig grew up in a low income area in Southern California. Um, his parents came from the Philippines with no college degree. Um, Craig also enjoys spending time with his family, riding his motorcycle, training in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and spending time in the great outdoors. Um, in terms of what Craig can offer in mentorship, um, he's really happy to share tips and tricks and some lessons that um, he's learned over his time in the accounting profession. And, um, you know, he, Craig brings a lot of great experience and expertise with over seven, uh, 27 years in this field. So, um, Craig, I, you know, I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself too and uh, speak to the crowd, but um, feel free to take it away. <laughs> sure. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, thanks for the intro. Um, I don't know how much more to add to that. Um, let's see, I haven't really done a lot of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu since COVID started. Um, that was one of my one of my 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 fun outlets that that I, I like to engage in. Uh, recently, I like to just try to keep keep the activities a little bit more simple. Uh, I'm, I'm a father of two mostly wonderful boys, uh, a little bit older now. Um, I got, I have one in college, the second one's a junior in high school. So trying to keep up with them, just trying to stay healthy enough and, and fit enough to, to, to run with them is, is, is a, is a challenge and a job in and of itself. Um, but yeah, I'm a lifelong learner. I enjoy learning new things. My latest distraction, I like to say is, um, learning about cyber currency or cryptocurrency, Bitcoin and Ethereum and trying to figure out what that means. And I think, um, you know, figuring out uh, things that, that, that are of interest to you that also uh, could tie into your professional life, that that's always a big plus. And, uh, and so, um, yeah, that's, that's where I'm spending a lot of my time these days. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just want to say thanks for sharing a little bit more about your personal background and like your interests and definitely agree. I think crypto is just, you know, it's super hot nowadays. So many people are interested and it's, it's kind of fun too. It goes up and down all the time. Right. So that's, really that's right. Cool. That's yeah. right. Um, just real quick though, for the crowd, um, I wanted to encourage you to, if you want to ask questions, feel free to go ahead and type into the chat or just unmute yourself and ask directly. Um, don't worry about interrupting too much. Um, we really want this to be an intimate session and, you know, even the name itself, Firstly Real Talk, we want this to be a space where you do feel comfortable to ask questions and um, always remember that there's no such thing as a dumb question. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to encourage that. Um, but with that said, I mean, let's kind of dive into this. I am really curious, Craig, would you tell us in the crowd about, you know, what are you, what are you passionate about? What am I passionate about? Um, yeah, that's a great question. The, I, I'm, you know, I, I, the older I get, the more I start to realize that, you know, we're, we're really just stewards of the things that we touch. You know, our time here is, is it's really brief when you kind of think about the big picture. And so recently, as, as, as my, especially as my kids got older and I start to have a little bit more free time to think about how I'm spending my time, and I start to realize that um, helping out the next generation really become who they're, who they're going to be. You know, that's, that, those are going to be the, the, the leaders, you know, the, the business owners, the innovators um, that are going to take our, our society into the, to, to the next era. And so just trying to help folks prepare for that is, is something that I'm really passionate about. You know, obviously I have two kids, as I mentioned, and, you know, I do the best I can to, to prepare them. Um, but even beyond, you know, kind of my small circle, 
I think about the, the, the folks at work with whom I interact um, and you know, um, the broader community and society that I'm a part of. You know, I, 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 I like to try to find ways to um, connect and hopefully bring up you know, even more folks uh, to help them achieve their full potential. I, I think um, there's a lot of folks who, who I've met over the years who, um, you know, for one reason or another, really never tapped into their full potential. And I always think, you know, hey, if that's a, if that's a choice, that's great. If that's how they wanted to be, but if it was because they never really felt they had access or some of the same opportunities, I, I think that's something that I, I really want to try to get in front of and and make clear that you know there is a lot of access if you're willing to to go after it. Right. Yeah, Craig, I, I love what you said because I mean, from my own experience as someone who's first gen from a low income area, I just see so much potential in the people that I kind of grew up with. And, you know, for some of those folks, they never had the opportunity or access to, um, you know, kind of social mobility. And, you know, maybe in some ways they didn't know they had access. And I think, you know, the tough part is really um, getting that first like internship or job. And I know that a lot of uh, mentees in the first lead program are kind of working on that first internship or job, especially in business. So, um, I mean, in terms of just taking that first step, um, I, I believe that that first step is always the hardest. So I'd be curious in hearing more about, you know, what were some of the struggles or challenges that you experienced when you were taking that first step into your professional journey? Yeah, I mean, it, it, um, it, it's interesting. Like I, I go all the way back. You got to go back to like the 80s for me. And, you know, I, I think back to when I was in, in high school and I was always a kind of an okay student. Uh, but my high school really wasn't the best high school. It was in LA Unified School District and um, didn't really prepare us for, for life once we graduated. Um, and so as a junior, I really, you know, kind of didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, decided to join the Navy when I was 17. And, um, you know, kind of things unfolded from there. And I was, I was able to, 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 somehow work my way into school uh, from that. But, you know, it, there was a lot of luck involved with some of this. And there was also the hand of a lot of people who saw potential and didn't want me to just become an enlisted, you know, military guy. Um, one of the first things that happens when you join the military is you take a test to see what your, what your specialty is going to be. And uh, based on my score results, my recruiter actually Kind of pulled me aside and said, you know, hey, I think you should really think about doing something else, which is kind of unusual, you know, because recruiters for the military just want to get people in. Uh, but he had a, a tie to the community as well, um, and and so you know, we talked about what, what might some of the programs be, and it turns out I qualified for for a naval scholarship, um, and um, you know, that's that kind of started my my journey into the professional world. But I really didn't know, you know, even even after I got my scholarship, um, I really didn't know what what was out there really kind of beyond some of the basic um, jobs that they that they described. Like I didn't know what a CPA was. I didn't know what an engineer was. My, my high school really didn't teach me about any of that. And so obviously, you know, uh, I've got a scholarship at Berkeley. They said, what do you want to major in? You know, that, from from square one, I was already behind the eight ball. And I didn't really have anyone who I felt like I can connect with to ask these questions, you know? And so when they said, what do you want to major in? I said math, because that was probably one of my stronger topics in school. And they said, well, you know, do you want to be an engineer? And I didn't have kind of the, you know, the, the courage to say, I don't know what that is. Um, and so I just kind of said, you know, no, I just want, I want to do math. And that's a shame, you know, I mean, that, that really is, um, I was ignorant to a certain degree. Some of it was on me because I, I, I you know, but I, I really didn't know what I didn't know. And, and so it was, it was just tough um, even getting to equal footing with people I was competing with. Um, and one of the things they said was, hey, you, you know, you may even want to think about, um, you know, my, my raw test scores were high enough to get me that Naval scholarship. And they said, you know, you might want to think about like a military academy, like Annapolis or West Point or air force given my raw my raw scores and by that point as a junior and this is where we start talking about 
some of the inequities and the lack of access. Um, you know, as I started that process, they said, I, I realized to even be competitive for some of these higher level opportunities, I, I had to, I should have started that process like two years, two years earlier um, to get admitted to say a, an academy, a military academy, you have to get a, a congressional nomination. And so I, I needed to know, like, how do you even access a senator or a congressperson to get their nomination? How do you build a relationship with them to even have a crack at that? And, you know, that's when I realized just how, you know, some communities really are, are, are really not on equal footing when it comes to some of these um, opportunities, unless they literally have a person that's willing to say, here's, here's how I can help you. Right. And, you know, and so... I don't know all, you know, I, obviously I don't know every field that's out there, but um, I, I, my, my network has expanded um, quite a bit and, and um, you know, I may not know a specific area, but I may know someone that may know someone and, and that, that's just the start. So anything I can do to try to help, uh, you know, folks connect and, and get those opportunities and, and just get awareness and learn about what they need to do yeah, that's that's what I'm what I'm trying to do. Um, I can't I can't cure all of the world's problems at once, but I figure you would chip away at it, and I do the best I can, and hopefully I help a few people, and they help a few people, and you know, there you go. It's the butterfly effect. <laughs> Absolutely, and I, Craig, I just wanted to say two things that really stuck out for me in terms of um, you know what you just shared is. Number one, just having someone who advocated for you, who believed in you, um, uh, in, in, and in a way, just kind of pushed you to achieve new things and as almost like a mentor and how impactful that was for your career journey. I just really love that. And I think, um, you know, I, that resonated a lot with me because, um, you know, when I was working with, with RSM, I had a mentor who was my manager who really saw this potential in me and pushed me to achieve new things. And in a way, they you know, saw things in me that I couldn't see for myself. And I think after having that mentor kind of convinced me that I do have a lot to bring on the table, that's when I kind of accelerated my career. Um, so I just really love that that resonated a lot with me and just, you know, this um, experience of not knowing what you don't know uh, and having a mentor or someone above you just being super pivotal to, you know, you understanding um, that knowledge gap that, that you have, right? I just think that's super important. And so, um, you know, this actually ties in well to our next question, which was, um, you know, we talked about this before, but uh, getting help from people is such an important aspect of success, especially for folks who are first gen and low income, who might not have like a, an uncle who is um, like a C-suite member or something, or like a business owner. Um, you know, you're learning this information from other people. So I'm kind of curious, like, who yeah. are, you know, who are the people that really were impactful for you and your career as you were getting that started up? Um, and, and I apologize, my, my I, I kind of broke up a little bit. So hopefully you, you guys can hear me okay. And if you can't let me know and I may have to switch to a headset or my cell phone. Is it okay or? Yeah, we, we could hear you just okay. right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Excellent. Um, so my mentors early on. Yeah, that's a good, that's a great question. I had a few folks, like I said, some of the, some of the recruiters um, and not really mentors, but more like, like, like folks who, who seem to have a, um, a a more, uh, but as far as mentors go and kind of professional coaches, that started probably when I started my career in public accounting at one of the big four. Um, my, my partner at that firm, um, she had a non-traditional path to get to the leadership role that she was in. And, um, you know, she, she really, um, she really coached me and, and got and helped, help shape uh, my path to a very large degree. Um, you know, she, one thing she always told me was that, you know, I, she, she, she actually envisioned, and this is at one of the big national firms, big four, she envisioned me as a partner and she said, I could see you as a partner. And, um, you know, to have someone 
you know, say that out loud, you know, to, you know, that to me was, was very motivating. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of folks, you know, especially when I was coming up, we, maybe we won't admit to trying to achieve a certain level because, you know, um, it was maybe a self-protection mechanism. If we don't get it, then we can always say, well, I didn't really want to do it anyway. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to achieve that. Um, and so if you don't get it, no harm, no foul, you, you know, you don't feel like you, you failed. Um, but to have someone actually tell me, I could see you as a partner. Um, you know, again, I, I didn't have the, the, the best academic preparation. Um, I was pretty rough coming out of school and, um, I don't know how many accountants are out there, but it, you know, back then we had, there were six big firms. I applied at all six and all six turned me down and said, yeah, you, you're not public accounting material. And to a certain degree that, you know, maybe they were right. I, 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 I needed someone to coach me up a little bit and really prepare me um, for kind of that, you know, this level of professionalism. And um, it took a little while for me to get that. Uh, but um, started my career actually uh, working for the government. Um, that you know, that's a classic job for the accountant who's probably a little rough around the edges. Um, but um, you know, I, I worked my way into finally getting into public accounting at one of the big national firms, and then from there, that's where my mentors kicked in and and coached me and and uh, helped me helped me see what I needed to work on. Um, right. You know, I think finding mentors who are sometimes brutally honest is good, but that takes trust. You know, um, I, I, I'm I'm willing to 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 take guidance from someone who I trust, and and who I know is is doing it for my really for my benefit and no other kind of you know underhanded reason. That that helped that helped me a lot. Um, and then being willing to be coached um, that was also kind of important. So, you know, I think. My mentors really were all from from the firms, the companies that I, I worked at. Uh, I didn't really have access to um, a network of successful people. Um, well, yeah, and I guess you got to define success, right? You know, and um, if you're if we're defining success based strictly on um, kind of career advancement and you know income generation, yeah, I didn't really have access to folks that that that, that achieved that uh, they, maybe they achieved success in other parts of their life uh, but not that so i didn't really have anyone in my growing up you know or in my smaller circle that i could talk to about that and it wasn't until i got into uh into my first firm that i had those people that i that, that could i could talk to yeah craig I, I think that story is amazing i mean just you know thanks for sharing about how you applied to um you know six <laughs> accounting firms and you were rejected by that but you still didn't give up and you found another entryway into this accounting profession. And, you know, for the people who interviewed you, who interviewed you and said, no, it's, I mean, it's, I mean, you're, you're a tax partner now. It, you work in accounting and this, I think that's amazing. So um, thanks for that. Yeah, it was, it was actually more than six, Kevin. I, I think I probably applied at like 20 firms and, you know, I, I applied at all the big six back then. Now it's big four, but big, big six back then. I applied at the next tier, you know, the RSMs, the um, Grant Thorntons, the BDOs at the time, got denied by all of them. Uh, I applied even at the regional firms, like just the one or two office firms for the Bay Area, and it got denied by all of them. And, you know, it was almost, um, you know, it was almost a, a validation of, of, of some of the negative thoughts that, that you know, we, we may have as we enter this. And one of the big things, the big things that, that I, I, that I grappled with was I really felt like, um, like, like I, I really didn't belong there. And, um, as I, as I got, as I got denied or rejected by firm after firm, it just kind of reinforced this concept that I don't belong, that, you know, this is a world that's foreign to me and uh, I'll never, I'll never be welcome there. Um, and, you know, then my, my own kind of self-defense mechanism kicks in and I say, okay, well then I don't really want to be a part of that world. But I, but honestly, deep down I did, you know, I mean, I, I, 
I wanted to to live in a good neighborhood and and allow my kids to go to a good school and get access to all the things that I, I never I never had access to. Right. Uh, um, you know, and, and so I was always kind of conflicted in that in that regard. And um, yeah, I, I I was I was fortunate. Uh, but I, at the same time, I also had that that vision, my my own vision, uh, that I did want to get into one of these firms, and I knew if I just had a chance, I you know I I would I would be able to to figure it out, and I did. Yeah, I, I mean I think that's just so inspirational. You you know faced this um, kind of like rejection, right? And you just didn't let that stop you, and um, you know, and you have these other things and goals, and you didn't let, even though that rejection hurt, you're, you're still persevering and that kind of, um, the strength that it takes to do that is super inspirational. So, um, you know, really appreciate you sharing that story. And I'm hoping that um, a lot of the mentees who are in this program, um, I know that applying for internships, it's extremely tough and you're probably going to get rejected a lot of times before you finally land that one that, you know, helps you start your career. So, um, you know, if you are kind of facing that rejection now, I hope you're listening to Craig's story about how this, you know, he didn't let the rejection stop him. And now he's a tax partner at RSM, which is amazing. So, um, okay, I know that we're um, at 526 and we're going to start to transition more towards Q&A. And this portion is going to be a little more interactive. Um, I see a couple questions from Connie. Um, uh, Connie, did you want to just unmute and ask your questions directly to, to Craig? Sure thing. Um, I guess my first one that I posted was several questions in one, but Craig, how do you think your experience has shaped you, how you teach your sons or younger relatives in terms of getting them ready for the professional world or mentorship, since you kind of had to dip your toes first? And now from those experiences, how has that changed? Or how do you think that compares to, I guess, maybe how your peers teach their kids? Yeah, I mean, I, that's a great question. Um, I resist the urge to, to take too heavy a hand in, in, in trying to shape their path. Um, you know, I, I see it with a lot of, a lot of parents in, in the neighborhood, <laughs> in the community where I live. Where you know the parents, it, they're they're you know, they do so much for the kids, and and you know I I applaud that on the one hand, but at the same time, um, I want my kids to 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 explore and learn and and you know sometimes fall down and skin their knee, uh, but be able to get up and and learn from it and and become a you know become better and more motivated from it. So um, my experience has has kind of taught me to, to sometimes step back a little bit and let let my children um try and and sometimes fail because i think you know that having having uh the resilience to rebound from failure will always will will, will it, it's it's the best defense you can ever have and that you know that builds confidence hopefully um and that confidence to take chances and take risks, knowing that you will rebound, I think that's what allowed me to keep moving up in in my career trajectory. Um, I am willing to take chances, and I am willing to fail. And you know, um, sometimes things don't work out. And but if I, I at least I know if I gave it my my best shot and I failed. Um, or it didn't work out, then it wasn't meant to be number one, but it's not the end of the world. And I'm going to turn around and pivot and do something else. And I want to try to teach my kids the same thing. Um, the thing that I learned was at 18, even at 21, 22, I, don't, I didn't know what I wanted to be. And, and that, that was okay. Um, and so I want, you know, I want, I want people to, to, feel okay. I want my kids to feel okay. And, and people who I mentor knowing that at, at 18 to 22, even 24, if you don't know really what you want to be, that's part of life. And, you know, exploring, you know, at, you have, you'll, you'll have some direction on what you want to achieve. And that's usually where I start my conversations. Like, how do you define success? Is success 100% oriented towards career? Um, is it oriented towards your pocketbook and how much you make? 
Is it oriented towards your family life? Is it oriented towards how you serve the community? Right? Once you once people start to isolate that, then I could help mentor them towards achieving some vision of success within within that that definition. Um, and so, you know, I my uh, my friends in the community they sometimes say I'm kind of like the hippie. CPA, right? It's like, it's like, uh, you know, I, I would be totally happy if, if my, my, my sons wanted to become musicians. My, my, my younger son is a great saxophone player. And, you know, this, this is, this is kind of the funny thing, because in, in, in the Filipino culture, it's kind of like, no, you, you get a professional job, and then you do the saxophone for fun. That, that's, that's your hobby. But I, I would be totally fine if he said, look, I want to I want to become a musician. I want to learn to play sax and I'm going to make a living doing gigs. I'm all for that. I'm like, you know what, if that's how you define success, um, then let's do it. And let's go 100 percent full tilt towards that. Um, so I think, you know, my experience has taught me that the, the definition of success is different for everyone. And being a mentor means you have, a, you know, really helping folks define what is their vision of success and being flexible enough to then, um, you know, uh, accept that and then work with them to help them achieve it. Uh, Craig, I just want to say, that I think that's an amazing answer. And what I loved about it was, um, first of all, you know, you being very supportive of whatever uh, profession or job or kind of career tra trajectory, a, a, you know, someone has and like what their unique path is and um, also just how you're teaching um, the people that you care about not necessarily the domain knowledge specifically but just this concept of really like resilience um, when something knocks you down you're going to pick yourself up and try again and just through the um, continuous process of trying different things taking risks and um, failing and then ultimately succeeding I think that is just so much more valuable than having um, just domain knowledge because with that domain knowledge, you're not learning um, how to persevere. And I think just the tone that you know, you're know you using in um, teaching some of these learnings, I think that's just so powerful and um, is going to get someone a lot further. So I really respect that, Greg. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> I, I have no doubt in that. So it's, if you know that means anything to you. <laughs> um, okay, and I see another question from uh, David Cox. Uh, uh, David, did you want to just go ahead and unmute and ask directly? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Um, I just have my question is, how did you know like someone uh, would be like your mentor? Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, it, it was always a person that was willing to spend time with me and connect with, connect with me on a personal level. Um, what you'll find like at a lot of a lot of firms, there are like formal uh, we call them career advisors or coaches that get assigned. But sometimes like over, over the years, I've worked with folks who really weren't my career advisor or my coach. They were just really serving an administrative function to fill out the forms, check the box and um, make sure that all of the HR paperwork was done. That's not a mentor. Um, the mentor was a person who would, would, would look at my reviews with me, like you get, you know, you, I get evaluated for, but, or I was evaluated by everyone that I, I worked for and would, would actually take the time to process it a little bit and then be prepared and, um, and talk with me about how I'm doing and, and, you know, give me advice on what I could do better. Um, yeah, it, it was the ones, the, my mentors were the ones who I, I felt I really had a good personal connection with that were truly um, interested in, in my, my success and, and my happiness. Yeah, Greg, I just think that's so important of having like a mentor who actually understands you and, you know, just kind of like your challenges and really seeing you as a person and someone that they want to help grow and how that kind of investment in you is just so impactful. So I, I think that's, that's great. And um, could you talk a little, little bit about how you were, um, able to get that mentor? I mean, we talked a little bit about career advisors, and I know that for RSM, uh, everyone who joins RSM has a career advisor who um, is supposed to put your interest first. So I'm um, just kind of curious, how were you able to, um, you know, kind of get that relationship with uh, someone started, that kind of mentorship relationship? 
you know, honestly, it was, um, it took time and it took investment from me as well. Um, so the, the, the woman that I was, I was telling you all about my partner who really, um, I think set me on, on my trajectory. Uh, she enjoyed doing happy hours after, like every week. I think it was either Thursday or Friday. Um, she liked to just hang out with, with the team, socialize live. We would have a drink. Um, it was, we'd have a margarita pizza, which was, <laughs> um, but it, I can always count on like, you know, Thursday or Friday afternoon, having at least two hours of, of uh, personal time with this particular partner, um, but not just her, it was other folks uh, in her circle. And yeah, it, it, I, I think um, for me, that it, it, there was a certain amount of investment I had to make as well, because you know, it was uncomfortable for me. Um, again, I, I didn't come from that background where, you know, uh, we would go to the, you know, where I would go to, um, you know, a, a high end bar and hang out and by the fire with, with folks who were all members of country clubs and played golf. I didn't play golf, right. And they all played golf. Um, and, and, you know, there, there was a part of me that said, Hey, I just want to go home, hang out with my friends, you know, and we're going to go do what we do. Um, but instead I had to say, no, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make the commitment as well to try to make these connections, um, with her, because I know she likes to do that. Uh, but then over time I, I started to get something out of that as well. Um, and so I think, I think maybe quick answer is it takes work. It took work. Uh, I had to put in the work as well. Um, uh, I had to put myself out of my comfort zone and realize that, uh, professional growth doesn't only happen eight to five or nine to five. It, if, if you're serious about it and you want to get to that next level, it's going to take, you know, time in, in the off hours. Um, you know, way back in the day, I used to also um, just, I just try to find what, what are the things that um, the successful people in the office did and, and try to, see if there were connections that I could form with them as well. So I could, like, if I, if I knew that, you know, say the office managing partner was, was big into um, the food bank and that's something that I was passionate about, then I could form a connection with them and also like, you know, help out at some of the events maybe that he was putting on for the food bank. And then he, when he saw that we had that personal interest and I was kind of giving, he kind of took an interest in me and then would start mentoring me as well. So it, it was kind of like, you know, it's a give and take. I had to give too, but then I, I was able to then receive. And so, um, you know, I, I think, I think, I think that maybe the quick answer is it's something that takes work and it's a two way street. Um, and sometimes you got to be uncomfortable and you're going to be uncomfortable but that's what it takes to, to get to that next you know, breaking point or the, the, the breakthrough point. Well, I, I think that's a great answer. And just, again, like this theme of perseverance in your life about how there's these spaces that you're not comfortable with. Um, and, uh, you know, even though you're hanging around people who, um, you know, go golfing all the time and that wasn't you, you kind of like force yourself in that situation and like embrace the discomfort because like you knew that, you know, growth isn't meant to be comfortable. Like you're doing a lot of this for the first time and just how, you know, you know, as coming in as like an associate or something and being uncomfortable and how just you were able to like grow within that and then become a partner and like rise above. I think that's super, uh, that's a super powerful story. So it's, thanks for sharing that, Greg. Yeah, for sure. No, for sure. I mean, it's, uh, again, I think there is, there is a certain amount of luck that comes into it or I don't know if it was luck or serendipity. Um, it was just kind of fate, but you know, it was almost like at those critical points in, in my career, when I was like moving up through the different levels, um, I would come across an, a new mentor that would help then take me the next, the next leg. So like him, um, my, my partner, my first mentor, she was able to get me to a certain level. Uh, but then I, I, I was kind of stuck and um, it took another mentor um, 
who had a different perspective and, and a, a kind of a different um, frame of reference than Kim to get me the rest of the way there. So, so what I mean by that was, um, I think a lot of the things I struggled with were cultural and um, and how I grew up. Um, you know, getting to that next level um, within pub, you know, big public accounting, there's there's a whole process around that, and that process begins before you even start your interview rounds with with the people that are going to decide if if I even get to that next level. And you know, it was it, it was like you're being evaluated almost every day you're in the office, even though, you know, it's not like a formal thing. It's just you're in the elevator. Um, one of the partners asks you, hey, how's it going? You know, what, you know, what, you know, what, what's 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 new? What's good? And it's like, how do, how do you respond to that? Right. And how do you make an impact on that person? Those were some of the interactions that I really wasn't trained for. And that required a little bit more formal training. Um, and I, by that time, you know, again, serendipity, I had hooked in with a, um, a person who was, um, um, she was a senior vice president at one of the investment banks in New York, um, and she was Asian. And, you know, she had a program that was designed for up, up and coming Asian executives. And it was, you know, she said things, the, the group that I was in, like this, this group that I ultimately ended up getting into, they, we, we did things and talked about things that uh, it, was, it was like an epiphany. It was like, you know, this is why I do what I do. And this is, you know, and, and this is how I can overcome that. And it was almost like someone pointing out, you know, hey, Craig, you've got spinach in your teeth. And um, it's as uncomfortable as it was to hear that from someone. I was able to like clean it up. And, you know, I, I think again, serendipity, th this coaching, all this mentoring started happening at a time when I really needed to hear it because, you know, it would, it would have been so easy for me to just say, look, it wasn't meant to be, you know, I shouldn't, I'm not going to make partner you know, here. This was at Ernst and Young, right? I made partner at Ernst and Young, but it would have been so easy to say, look, I'm not going to make partner there. And it's just not meant to be in the story. I'm going to go do something else. But um, this was almost like it, this was like that reserve tank where they gave it to me at the last minute. And I, I said, you know what, I, I, I can become a partner here and I will become a partner here. And I now have the tools uh, at my disposal to, to, to get there. And, and, you know, that was great, I, I think. But that was through a lot of work from and, and a lot of, of contributions made by, by other folks to help me get there. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I just love that. Just this entire theme of perseverance throughout your entire life story and just how like you, you know, this really big impact of like mentors and how that contributes to your success. I think that's, that's just great. And I know for a lot of uh, folks, um, you know, the firstly mentees on this call, um, I, I know that a lot of them, you know, they have mentors trying to figure out that that's a great fit and like working through that and improving that mentor relationship. Um, I, you know, from Craig's story, I just, uh, you know, I'm seeing how having a mentor like that who believes in you is just really going to push you so far and help you develop that sense of, I guess, like belonging and confidence in yourself that is kind of hard to get sometimes when you have, you know, like your first gen or low income and you're not comfortable in those spaces. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I hope you're listening to the Craig story and seeing how really the value of mentorship is just so uh, immense and, um, you know, hoping that everyone puts the effort in crafting that mentorship relationship and really getting the most out of that and using that as a way to advocate for yourself and just also becoming more comfortable in these professional spaces. So um, thanks for sharing, Craig. Um, with that said, I know we're, you know, kind of running out of time here. So I um, just wanted to transition a little bit. I know we talked about um, RSM and, um, you know, for example, how they have a lot of career advisors available. Um, one thing that I think is just great about RSM also is Instead of, I um, in addition to having career advisors when you become a professional there, um, they also have these really cool scholarships for students. And I'm actually going to share my screen because I wanted to um, show you all some of these upcoming opportunities. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, share my screen here. Um, are you all able to see the RSM scholarships? Okay, getting some head nods. So that's cool. Um, let's see. Yep. So, um, you know, once again, I, I think this is a great opportunity for students. They have uh, 
they're awarding uh, 10 students, um, each with an award of $10,000 for the Power Your Education Scholarship. And in addition to that, specifically for first gen, they have this um, you know, first generation scholarship. Um, again, five, five students are going to get 10K in scholarships. And this is something that gets renewed for up to three years. So uh, this could be a value of uh, you know, $30,000 for the scholarship. Um, the application window um, ends on February 28th. So definitely recommend you, you know, if you have your phone with you, feel free to just scan the QR code um, on the uh, screen. But if not, this is also posted in the Firstly Discord channel. Uh, we have the, uh, uh, you know, opportunities channel that you can access. And there's also a sign up link there. Um, you know, if you go ahead and submit your information, what we can do on the Firstly side is forward that info to the recruiters just so they have like your information and um, you know, um, I think they're gonna be sending additional follow-up information as well. So just, you know, if you're interested in us sending the information um, to the RSM recruiters, feel free to submit that Google form that's in the opportunities channel. Uh, otherwise, you know, feel free to just apply directly as well for these uh, scholarships and op opportunities. Um, so with that, um, one quick thing I wanted to add to, if you, um, go into the opportunities channel and click the uh, Google form. We're, we also have the recruiters uh, contact information there too, in case you wanna reach out and ask questions directly. Um, and if you have any trouble um, kind of understanding how to apply or go through this process, feel free to reach out to anyone. Um, I know we have Craig on here. I, I know we have a lot of mentors who are also in RSM um, who would be more than happy to help out. And you know, I myself more than happy to like point you in the right direction too. So um, feel free to reach out. Um, with that said, I'm just going to wrap this up by um, talking very briefly about what's coming up next for Firstly. So I know that um, the formal month-long program is starting to end, and we have uh, some assignments that are due soon. Um, just really want to encourage you to, um, you know, go ahead and complete those assignments and let us know if you're having any issues uh, completing the assignments. And I mean, uh, you know, with the end of the formal month-long program. We're also going to be launching additional uh, modules that you can access where you can get direct uh, resume help, um, direct help with interview questions, and also um, direct help with um, your elevator page and how to brand yourself. So a lot of, a lot of this stuff is up and coming um, and just wanted to, you know, let you know that that was coming up so that you can kind of, um, you know, keep, uh, you know, stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, with that said, I just want to say thank you, Craig, so much for your time. And I mean, I had a really good time just understanding you better as a professional and just kind of connecting with you and some, uh, you know, some of these challenges that you uh, experienced and how um, you were able to overcome that. I think, you know, once again, super inspirational and really appreciate your time, Craig. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Um, good luck, everyone. And yeah, I think this is a great program. <clears throat> It's a great opportunity to meet folks and um, hopefully give give you all some ideas that you could try um, to to achieve what you what you're ultimately destined to achieve. So, um, yeah, congrats on on being a part of this. It's great. Thank you so much, Craig, and um, thanks for joining everyone. Yeah, have a good night. Thanks. <laughs>